God spoke. God's words. God spoke the world into existence in six days. Then the beginning of the Ten Commandments, Exodus 20, says, And God spoke all these words, saying, then we have Deuteronomy chapter 6, the famous Hear, O Israel passage, golden text of the Old Testament. It says there, And these words that I command you today shall be on your heart. Among Moses' last words to Israel, he said, For it is no empty word for you, but your very life. And by this word you shall live. Psalm chapter 12. The words of the Lord are pure words. Psalm 119. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet. And a light unto my path. Isaiah chapter 40. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of God will stand forever. Jesus, when he was tempted, he said, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word which comes from the mouth of God. Jesus later on said, Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. John chapter 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And then in verse 14 of that chapter, and the Word became flesh and dwelt on us. In John chapter 6, Jesus said to his men, the words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. But many still turned away from him. Peter then said to Jesus, To whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Later on, that same cycle, Peter would write these words. He would write, The word of the Lord remains forever. And this word is the good news of preaching. The centrality of the word of God, basic theme of God's word, maybe the basic theme of God's word. And so it, it, it shouldn't be surprising that as we come to the closing chapters of the word of God in Revelation chapters 21 and 22, Seven times in those chapters. Seven. No accident. Seven times in those chapters. The uniqueness of the reliability of God's word is affirmed. So chapter 21 in Revelation, verse 5. These words are trustworthy and true. And then chapter 22, verse 6. Again, these words are trustworthy and true. We'll look at verse 7 in a moment chapter 22. Verse 9 of that chapter refers to those who keep the words of this book. And then verse 10, do not seal up the words of the prophecy of this book, for the time is near. And then in verses 18 and 19, curses are called down upon anybody who adds to or takes away from the words of the prophecy of this book. Well, I hope the point is clear. The power and the trustworthiness and the importance of the Word of God from beginning to end and everywhere in between. The power, the trustworthiness, and the importance of the Word. Is it that way for you? Let's read 
this little portion of the word together before we leave this this morning. Revelation 22, the first seven verses. Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, bright as crystal, flowing down to the throne of God and of the Lamb, through the middle of the street of the city. Also, on either side of the river, the tree of life, with its twelve kinds of fruit, yielding its fruit each month. The leaves on the tree of the tree were for the healing of the nations. No longer will there be anything accursed, but the throne of God and of the Lamb will be in it, and His servants will worship Him. They will see His face, and His name will be on their foreheads, and night will be no more. They will need no light of lamp or sun, for the Lord God will be their light. They, they will reign forever and ever. And he said to me, These words are trustworthy and true. And the Lord, the God of the spirits of the prophets, has sent his angel to show his servants what must soon take place. And behold, I am coming soon. Blessed is the one who keeps the words of the prophecy of this book. John's vision here in Revelation draws to a close with a picture of heaven. What is heaven in John's picture? It is paradise restored. It is the curse reversed. It's a return to the glories and beauties of the Garden of Eden. Only better. Mankind once had a place like this where they could live, they could walk and talk with God Okay, we had a place like that once. But sin entered and destroyed it and, and they were kicked out and they were not allowed to re-enter. Until now, in John's vision. So in the middle of heaven is the throne of God and of the Lamb. Jesus, the lamb whose blood was offered at the cross to make it possible to go back to this place. And now notice that there is no more sin. There's no sin there. There's no, no more sin curse as a result. I don't know about what you most look forward to in heaven. For me, it's no more sin. No more temptation. No more curse. There is there a life-giving river and a tree of life, and there's no more sickness, only health. And the citizens of the heavenly city get to see the face of God. Not even Moses got to do that. And there's no more darkness. No darkness, because God is light, and in him there is no darkness. If you prefer the night, I'm sorry. There is no night in eternity with God. 
And if heaven is anything, it's the presence of God. And heaven is an eternal place, eternal, unbroken fellowship with God and the Lamb. That is something we have never known. We don't know what that's like. We're going to find out. This is what awaits the people of God, the servants of the Lamb. It's what Jesus promised his followers. He was going away to prepare for them. And what he promised he would come back and take them to. It is how we were meant to live. We were not created for this existence we are currently in. Do you realize that? Even though a lot of times it can be good, you know, we can have good times here, enjoyable times. We can have joy. We can have love. We can have very enjoyable experiences in this, in this existence, in this world. But we were not built for this world. We were built for that world. This world is not our home. That one is. And when we get there, we'll know it. We'll feel it. That we're at home. And we will praise God for it. So in, in verse 6 again of our passage, we're reminded that, that all this is trustworthy and true. And, and the word is from God. And, and the word is coming soon. And then comes the sixth of the seven blessings of the apocalypse there in verse 7. Notice again what it says. And behold, I am coming soon. Blessed is the one who keeps the words of the prophecy of this book. And that ought to sound a little familiar if you've been keeping track as we've gone through these. It's very much like the first of the seven blessings that we've studied. All the way back, chapter 1, verse 3, the first one we looked at. It's almost identical. It just goes to show how important the blessing is. It's, it's repeated at both the beginning and the end. This must be an awfully big part of what this entire book is about. Blessed are those who keep the words of this prophecy. Blessed are those who keep the words. Who keep the words of God. Why? Why are they so blessed? Look at what they inherit. Look at what their future is. They get to see God. They get to look upon the face of the blessed Savior who lived and died and lives again for them. Don't you want to do that? Don't you want to see Jesus? Can you imagine that moment? Blessed are those who keep his word. Because one day they will get to see the word. One day they will get to embrace the word. One day they'll get to thank the word face to face. Blessed are they. My friend, I don't know. I don't know a better appeal that I can make this morning. I don't know a better invitation to extend. I guess there are all kinds of appeals that could be made, all kinds of invitations offered. I guess I've heard all kinds of them for all my years. But I don't know a better one. 
don't you want to be with Jesus? Don't you want to see him? Blessed are those who keep his word. If there's anything standing between you and him and that reunion, get rid of it this morning. Is obedience standing between you and him? Is repentance standing between you and him? Whatever it is, it's not worth it. Blessed are those who keep the word. And this morning is a morning to make a change if a change needs made. I ask you, do you want to be with him? Do you want to see him? If we can help you in your obedience or your return to the Lord today, we want to whatever it takes. Please come while we stand, while we sing.